long life is not just your heritage. It is your right in Christ. God's plan for me and you is not just to live long, but to live well. Live long and what? Live well. If you are living long and you are not living well, it will be full of regrets. It will be full of pain. It will be full of torture. It will look as if God is unfair to you. He's blessing others. He's not blessing you. But I discovered that in as much as long life is your heritage and your right, the truth still remains. You need secrets to assess them. Secrets. Job said, when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, it takes secrets to live sacred. Nothing makes you different like the secrets you know or the secrets you command. And secrets are hidden truths that you ought to know, but it's always hidden. Scripture said, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the honor of kings to search them out. If you must live long and live well, you must search out the secrets. God said, I wish, but you go walk. Go and walk it out. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. I wish. Secrets are mysteries. Once they are discovered, they empower the one that has discovered them. And they give them mastery. The foundation for long life has always been supernatural, not natural. Are you what I'm saying now? It's supernatural. You don't live long by living your life to chance. If you live your life to chance, evil will take place. Are you hearing me now? Evil will do what? Don't live your life to chance. So if someone is living long, go and find out there are some things he did some months back, some years back that you are seeing now as a manifestation physically. So whatever anyone is experiencing in terms of long life and that will experience in terms of long life must be provoked by positive action. So if you lose your connectivity with the supernatural, you are bound to die like men. Scripture says, hey, stop that phone there. Stop that. Stop that. Please pick that phone from him. Pick it quick. Scripture says, they know not. Neither will they do what? Understand. He said, all the foundation of the earth are out of course. I said, and you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes if you know not. So ignorance is the first killer. Ignorance is the what? First killer. And God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We are going to take them 7-7 seven, seven in each service. I will make them brief so that we catch we catch each one. Okay, I will take four. I will take um, three in this place and three here. There is even more. Now, 
the natural is controlled by the supernatural. Am I correct? But many have resigned their life only to the natural. And even in the natural, they are missing the natural. If you must live long and live well, number one, take less sugar. And eat more fruits. Each bottle of Coke contains how many cubes? It's eight. And there are some people in the church, any food they eat, Coke must be by the side. It's not a sign that you have money, it's a sign that you are dying quick. Are you hearing me now? And funny enough, we are in a city and a land where we are blessed with all kinds of fruits. Just is one of the most outstanding cities in the world. But you know, they see it as a, I cannot be eating grass. Less coke, less fanta, more fruits. The more sugar you accumulate, you are building up a trigger for diabetes. And parents, don't think it's a, a sign of a <laughs> that you are loading your children with coke. No. Less sugar, more fruit. For adults, hear me, if you are accumulating sugar, you may catch stroke. Yes. We call it partial paralysis. Go just catch you. Bah. Excess sugar is converted to what? You just be fatty. And fatty is not that a sign of uh, evidence of good living. It's evidence of ignorant living. Praise God. Less sugar, more fruits. Don't see fruit as luxury. At least my pastor knows me. At times I just decide not to eat anything. I just be swallowing fruits. He said, would you eat that? I'm okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are some fasts that we do I will not eat one single food. Fruits all through. Morning, night. Night. I'm just taking fruit. I'm taking fruit. Because if you must live long, don't worry, you will see that after this point, where we talk about vision for health, for long living, you will now see it. Are you what I'm saying now? You need to discipline yourself if you must live longer. Because all these long throats that is doing anything you see, one chop. You are chopping trouble. Are you around saying now? Number two, rules for supernatural living. Less word, more action. Talk less. Don't be a talkative. Scriptures say, in a multitude of words, sin is not lacking. So when you are given to talking too much, you'll be talking careless and talking stupid. Mark it. And scriptures say, a fool, even when he keeps quiet, is regarded as a wise man. A fool, even when he keeps quiet, is considered a wise man. 
Apostle Peter said, if you will live long and see more better days, keep your mouth from speaking guys. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. He said, them that love you shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you are talking careless, you are eating death. Talking careless, saying things that doesn't concern you, you are eating death. Gradually you are going without knowing. As scripture says again, you are ensnared by the words of your mouth. Your mouth is putting you into trouble. You want to live long? You want to live long? <laughs> Go and buy padlock. Only talk when it is necessary. Your mouth can abort your life. Rule number three less worry, more sleep. Some people worry for unnecessary things. Hear me? They don't give a word for worry. And worry, worry does not make you a warrior. Are you hearing me now? Does it make you a warrior? No. Worry eats up the cells of the body. Worry gives birth to depression. Worry can collapse your hormones. You don't know? Worry. <laughs> Jesus said, take no thought for thy life. He said, cast your care upon the Lord, for he does what? He cares for you. Take no thought. My father told me this, and Reverend Simon Afalabi recorded sometime. He said, anything anybody is trying to struggle to collect from your hand, don't bother yourself. Oh. You will still meet it in the future. You will still meet it in the future. That's why I've learned never to struggle anything with anybody. Never. For what? I don't agree. We go die today. Go and die. Oh. I'll die with you. Worry less. When you worry less, you live better. Just like that young brother now. The people we are getting worried, how can we do away with this person? Not knowing that the trap they were setting was to catch their own son. And the thing caught well. Any person planning for you, their trap will catch them. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. So, worry less. I will mention this one both in the first service and in the second service. Number four, less soda, more water. Most of what we take are acidic. Most of what we take is what? Acidic. Since I learned this principle, my first food after every morning is water. What does water do? The first thing water will do is to reduce the pH level of your body and flush out. So after brushing, they must keep three sachets, two, two sachets of water. I must swallow it. No food. Though. I don't take the first food. I'm on my way. And not only that, our body pH is always on the rise because of the kind of food we eat. So it's increasing the acidity of our body. So to neutralize it, you need something that will bring it down. The first thing what I will do is to reduce the pH level of your body. Your blood can be acidic. But you don't know?
I remember the testimony of um, Reverend Tunde Bakare. He collapsed one day. After that, they told him that every day must finish one full bottle of ever, ever water. There's a level you will suffer dehydration if you cause high blood pressure. I'm not a doctor, but I need to know these things. So that nobody will come and tell me, let's check your blood. Which blood? <laughs> Are you what I'm saying now? Is water expensive? Is water luxury? Well, everybody has it. So you see, and one of the secrets of the Chinese, the Japanese, is just this small, small thing. You know. We have lemon, we have grape. What they do is just pour it inside water and drink it. And we have it bracketed in just. re bracketed They even throw it safe. They cut it, put it inside water, drink it. What are they doing? Reducing the pH level of the body. It has never crossed some people's mind. Their own is stop by and buy a carton of malt. Buy a carton of coke. Just be loading. Be loading. You are, in, you are reducing your half-life quick, quick. Are you what I'm saying now? Huh? I just reduced my half-life. Please be careful. How many have I mentioned? Number five. Living long is a function of your identity. The people that do know their God, they shall be what? And they shall do what? You must know your God. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. If you don't know who you are, Satan will place you where you are not supposed to be. A misplacement of identity is the fountain of frustration. Identity fuels strength. Identity provokes grace. So who you are is one of the greatest discoveries you need if you must live long. And if you don't know who you are, anything is permitted to happen to you. Anything. But knowing who you are, with long life, will I satisfy you and show you my salvation? It will lead us to the second one. I shall not die but live to declare the good works of the Lord. I shall not die. So don't think of dying. But you know what? Situation can make you think of dying. That's why you hear some people say, what am I really living for? Eh? Am I better than those people that have died? Let me just die. Go. I'm not going to follow you. <laughs> you go, you go for yourself. I hear what I'm saying now. Huh? An ignorance of your identity can make you not to live your full life. An ignorance of your identity. So you must know who you are in Christ. Christ has redeemed me from the cause of the Lord. Scripture says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. For the laws of the spirit of life has set me free from the laws of sin and death. So you need to have an understanding of your identity. Your identity is very, very important. Number five. Number six, you need to have what we call vision for living. Vision. Tell your neighbor, vision for living. 
Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people do what? If you must live long, you must have vision for living. Hear me? Point number one, two, three, four is vision that brings it. People of vision, they know what they want and they know what they don't want. You can't have a vision for living and live hopeless, think hopeless, and act hopeless. So vision for living delivers you from hopelessness. It delivers you from depression. It delivers you from thinking thoughts of death. So you need vision. If you are anointed or in grace to always be frowning and be bitter, you won't live longer. Zig Ziglar, in one of his research, they discovered that people that crosses 80, they are always excited people, always laughing. But some people will say, now so my face be. <laughs> now so my face be. Now lie. Nobody say your face be now. Your heart be like that. Because laughter is generated from the heart. Scripture says, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. Are you hearing it now? A merry heart doeth good like what? Medicine. Men get excited. I may react against any person, but I cannot wear the cloak of uh, anger. Lie, lie. For what? So that you will not steal my joy. God for me, but I can't give it to you. You need if you if you must live long, you need vision. No? Visionaries are not careless people. People that lack vision for her, they are careless about everything. Careless about everything. Careless how they talk. Careless how they do their things. Careless where they go. Careless who works with them. You must be careful. But when vision is in place, it fuels vitality. It brings about vibrancy. Because vision has the capacity to prolong life. Prolong life. You can't be seeing yourself in 120 and be thinking like someone that will die by the end of December. No. Concerning Jesus, scripture says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured. He endured the cross. So when vision is at work, your mind is in a particular place. Not what is happening around you now. Are you hear what I'm saying now? You need vision. So anyone that doesn't have vision, go and get one. No? Are you hearing me now? Go and get one. You need vision. Vision prolongs life. Vision strengthens your mind. Vision fuels courage for you. Even in the midst of discouragement, you are encouraged. Why? Whatever is happening now is only for a moment. Scripture says, surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be what? Cut off. The expectation cannot be cut off. Why? Vision is in place. Number seven. Am I correct? Is confession. Every word provokes faith. Releases life. Jesus said, these words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. Talk life. Don't talk death. Talk life. 
remember that um, field commander that came to Dr. Kenneth Copeland that they were to go as a replacement for the troops that returned from that Iraq-Iran war. But he just came for prayer. I should pray for him. He didn't only pray for him. He opened Psalm 91 for him and gave him, he said, every day be declaring this scripture. So he gave them Bible to give to all his soldiers. So every working morning, my men, they finish their morning prayer, they will not be personalizing Psalm 91. At the completion of their stay, no one with stray bullets. No one was injured. Every one of them came back intact. Because what you say is what you will see. What you say becomes your practical experience. And God said, I will do the very thing that I hear you say. You see the danger of talking careless? You're putting yourself into more trouble. So every time you are speaking God's word, you are releasing life. You are enforcing divinity. You are mobilizing the angels to make sure that the world does not fall to the ground concerning you. Live in long. I remember one of my friends also, some days that I stayed in the house after their morning devotion. You know their own scripture? Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon. Form. No fashion against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rise against me in judgment, he said, they are condemned. He just declared that scripture. He's on his way. Our life is rooted in the word. The more you speak it, the more you enforce it. The more you speak it, the more you do what? Enforce it. The more you speak it, the more you make it real. You cannot just suddenly experience what you have not been saying. So as you are saying it, God has something to confirm for you. If you don't say it, God has nothing to confirm for you. So living long is now your choice. Even though it's your right. You must enforce your choice by your speaking. You enforce your choice. Scriptures doesn't just suddenly come to pass. Someone provoke them by declaring them. So if it must come to pass for you, you must not stop declaring. You must keep declaring. You must keep emphasizing. And Jesus said, you shall have whatsoever you say. So what you keep saying, what you keep declaring, is what you will have. You shall have whatsoever you say. And lastly, is the power of the communion table. Everyone will agree with me, we have anti-malaria. But we don't have any anti-death. Is there any anti-death tablet? Anti-death injection? Eh? The communion gives us mastery over health and over life. So what the communion table can do for me and you, no drug anywhere can do it. This is what we call anti-death. Anti-death drug. Let's read 
John chapter 6, we'll take it. Let's start from verse 48. As I round off very quickly. I am the bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and I was dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not what? So every time you eat it, you are fired up for more living. Verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live for what? Yeah. Underline that word. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Verse 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh? Are we now which? Verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat of the flesh. Are you seeing it now? Not bread again. Flesh. Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you have no life in you. As scripture said, the life of the flesh is in the what? Blood. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. Eternal life. Eternal life is not timed. Eternal life is the Zoe kind of life. He shall live forever longer. So if you must live we have to, looked at live well now we are looking at live long now if you must live long hear me you need this heavenly manner there is something unique about the bread the flesh and there is something unique about the blood The flesh has all the nutrients that is needed. Even in the wilderness, they used it. This is the flesh that a man should eat and not die. So every time you eat the communion, you puncture enchantments. You puncture divination. You puncture sorcery. It revitalizes. It strengthens our liver, our kidney, our eyes. It is called the angel's food. In Psalm 78 and verse 25, they ate angel's food. Angels, they live as supernatural beings. So every time you take of this food, the flesh, your strength level, your energy level is activated. God told the prophet, he said, eat for the journey is still far. Eat for the journey is what? Far. If you, re you really go far, you need this food. You need this food. You need the flesh. I'd like us to understand again that the flesh is an impartation. Your own natural flesh has weakness. The supernatural flesh does not have weakness. It is purity in power, purity in might, purity in strength. What your physical flesh cannot carry, where your physical flesh cannot bring you to, the supernatural flesh takes you to. It moves you forward. It keeps you going. It drives you forward. You never get to a point where you are wearied. 
And not only that, every time we partake of the flesh, it goes as the spiritual arrester. It arrests every sickness. It judges every infirmity. It arrests, it judges, and it flush out. That's why it is called the spiritual rod. It smites the bands of wickedness. I remember one young boy that came to one of our services, not here. They say he had weak heart. He cannot walk distance. Started taking communion. I started taking communion. After about a week and some days, he told the uncle that uh, he doesn't want to follow them in the car. He said, why? He said, he wants to trek. That he's feeling something. He trekked to church. So the next communion service, he trekked again. He told him, he said, brother, I'm here. I want to give testimony. His uncle didn't even know what was happening to him. That was the day his uncle had it. He said, I can't trek two poles without sitting down to rest. A boy of 13 years. I can't trek two poles without sitting down to rest. But after that communion service, <laughs> The power of God took over him. He said, from now, if they are going to church, they should enter their car and be going. He will be trekking. He will be trekking. So there is power in the communion. It restores life. It re-energizes your system. That's why the church is known as the service station. Communion service. We are being serviced for life. Our longevity is empowered. Do you know the arrows and enchantment that are taking place concerning you on a daily basis? But every time you come for the communion service, you are refired. The plan of hell is aborted. Likewise, also, the blood. He said, My blood is drink indeed. My blood is drink indeed. Every time we partake of the blood, it brings about mental alertness. Scripture says when he gave them the communion, their eyes were open. Should I tell you something that will shock you? Communion increases your mental memory. It enhances your mental intelligence. There are some people that suffer from severe memory loss. Take communion. Your memory will be restored. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Likewise, all internal problems in your system, they come under the repair, the restoration power, the surgical power of the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So if you must experience restoration, recovery, the blood must be in place. So you must not play with the communion. The blood carries all the nutrients, all the virtues. The grace of God is in the blood. The help of God is in the blood. The power of God is in the blood. The wisdom of God is in the blood. In the natural, when they want to do blood transfusion, they say, they say is he O positive? They say it's a universal donor. The blood of Jesus is not O positive. It's eternal life. Alive and active. So it can service anybody. Are you know what I'm saying now? It can service what? Anybody. 
the blood is an anti-death blood. When forces are crying out against you, the blood lifts up a standard. This one has been redeemed by the blood. He's unkillable. This one has been redeemed by the blood, so he cannot just suddenly expire. So when the enemy shall come, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. The Spirit of God is in the blood. So he makes sure that your life is preserved. He preserves. He preserves you in the journey. He preserves you while you are even asleep. The blood is a preserver. So you don't take it unconsciously. You take it consciously. Every time you are partaking of the communion, you are reinforcing long life, not short life. I was listening to the testimony of a Biomi when Ebola struck in Port Harcourt. The doctor that attended to the man before he died was from his church. Just call. We have a crisis situation here. The man that just died had Ebola disease. And any person that stayed there was definitely go. And God told him. He was now asking, Lord, Lord, what is the cure? The scripture just jumped out. He that eats my flesh and drink my blood shall not die. So, the 27 persons that were quarantined, because any person that is there when it happened is a suspect. They all quarantine everybody. Before you know what's happening, he sent them communion. And he was praying for all of them. All of them escaped. This is the flesh that a man should eat and not what? So as you partake of this communion, whatever wants to kill you expires. Scripture says the covenant of death shall be what disannul, and the agreement with hell shall not what stand. Shall be disannul. Shall be disannul. It shall be disannul. It shall be disannul. Whoever wants you to die, as you partake of this communion, the person will die for you. Somebody is angry. Is it in the Bible? Isaiah forty-three. But now, thou sayest the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Verse 2, when thou pass through the water, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be born. Neither shall thy flame kindle upon thee. Verse 3 now, for I am the Lord thy God. The Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt a nation no, for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sibia for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. As you partake of this communion today, an exchange will take place. Whoever wants to use their head, their own head, we go. Whoever has been sponsoring arrow for you today, their head, we go. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And lastly, if you don't serve God, you will serve sickness. If you don't serve God, your money will sponsor affliction. You shall serve the Lord and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and take sickness from the midst of thee. None shall cast their young and the number of your days I will fulfill. 
So service <laughs> guarantees longevity. Rise up to your feet. We're going to lift up our voice to pray. Take cancer together. Shall not stand. Let's read that scripture. Isaiah chapter 8. Associate yourself, O ye people, and you shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye of far country. Guard yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Guard yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Verse 10. Take cancer together. You shall come to naught. Speak the word, it shall not stand, for God is with us. Isaiah 54, verse 15. 54, verse 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall. They shall fall. They shall fall. I prophesy this every morning upon the head of my enemies. Any man gathering against me, I prophesy against you, you will fall. I stand as your prophet and your pastor. Whoever is gathering against you for any evil purpose, they will fall. Anyone guarding against you and planning evil for you, they will be broken in pieces. The evil they plan for you, they will be victims of their plan. You are going to lift up your voice, Lord, as I partake of this communion. Every programming of untimely deaths, mishap, disaster, Lord, by the blood, by the flesh, Swallow whatever want to swallow me. Lift up your voice and begin to declare. Raketos is only hundred. Denurushki osate kika. Bekuke ikalato. Jesus in army krata. Eroto soto ikopales. Whatever want to swallow me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the flesh of Jesus, swallow any witchcraft altar, any enchantment, any divination, any sorcery, any affliction, any sponsor of affliction. Let this communion swallow them. La Peto Sutapa. Father, I bought the agenda of hell. I bought the agenda of the wicked. Zuka Prakatu says so. Genusi Kake Krekete. In Sodoro Eku Prekete. Jesusia Ekrutapa. Enake Keretu Zata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. Scripture said the wages of sin is death. Death is knocking you, but Jesus said, I want to give you life. You can be in church and not be in Christ. That's where wherever you are right now, you want to make a quality decision for Jesus. Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray of this communion, whatever has not been working well, it will start working well now. Anyone they fired an arrow of witchcraft injection through dream, by this communion, that arrow will be flushed out. Every satanic poison that has been lodged in your body, 
I decree this communion go as a weapon of judgment, flushing every deposit of the devil. Amen. That amen is not good yet. Amen. By this communion, your recovery is established. Amen. Your recovery is established. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nothing will cut your life short. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Every arrangement made by the wicked for you, they will go for you. Amen. Any altar calling your name for evil, let the person answer the evil call. Amen. The God of Oyeriko will keep you well and stronger. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, it shall be well with you. Amen. You will not just suddenly fall sick. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Nothing will collapse the system of your body. Amen. Anyone suffering any malfunction, I decree restoration for you. Amen. That liver problem is healed now. Amen. High blood pressure, you are caused in the name of Jesus. Amen. Diabetes, you are caused in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree total restoration for you. Amen. Whatever look like an arrow of affliction sponsored against anyone, I command it to go back and catch the sender. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Congratulations. Please get there too. Congratulations.